Holy shit, that was the worst <laughs> saying ever. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I have a very fun video that I'm very excited about, in which I give you book recommendations based on your favorite Taylor Swift album. I don't know if I've exposed myself on this page, but I am a Swifty. I am a Swifty. Like, I'm a Swifty. And I was thinking about video ideas and I was like, you know what? Let's do this. I started doing a TikTok series basically in which I've been giving an album by Taylor Swift and then I give three book recommendations and I was like, you know what? Let me give YouTube the early access to my recommendations and have a little fun with it. So yeah, I'm gonna go in reverse chronological order and give you three book recommendations based on each of her albums. I love them all. Let's get into it. Before we do, I have an orange wine, which I've been getting into lately. Don't know how to pronounce this. Wipe and Grau? 2019 from Von Boden in Brooklyn, New York, imported by them. Parts of Germany, white wine. Yeah, let's see what this is giving. Mm. Okay, orange wine's my new shit. Like, it's so good. Um, I know Taylor Swift in an interview during the Lover era, she said that her favorite wine was a Sincere, which I don't have right now. It was more expensive and sometimes hard to find. Or I forgot to get it in preparation of this video. Let's enjoy some white wine in Taylor Swift's honor. She's a wine queen and get into the recommendations. First up, we have Evermore, her latest and greatest. I have three recommendations for you. The first one is so Evermore. I've been thinking about this and I feel like I'm very clever. I'm probably not that clever, but let's get into it. So Death in Her Hands by Tessa Moshfeg. Y'all know my favorite Moshfeg, but it fits so well. So Evermore has a track called No Body, No Crime. And in this book, there is no body and the narrator wonders if there's a crime that's been committed. So yeah, and it's also like very woodsy, isolated older woman. I think Ivy, the best song in Evermore. Fight me if you want to, but Ivy is so good, so underrated, no one talks about it. About a cheating older woman, like, you know, we stand. The storytelling skills on that album, ridiculous. So yeah, I had to recommend that one. We have the murder mystery going on, plus an isolated old woman, dealing with her past, very reflective, moody, woodsy, alone in a house very green. It's giving me Evermore. Second is Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch. If y'all remember, <laughs> she released like five to six different witchy versions of Willow, the lead single from the album. And so I had to put this one. This one we follow a woman named Katharina Kepler who's been accused of being a witch in the 1600s. You know, very storytelly vibes, but also it's just funny because I was like, damn, capitalist queen selling many versions of this song to get it number one. You know, it's, it's the Swifty way. And then finally, I had Jane a Murder. I had to think of another one that kind of fit into this kind of reflection, family history, murder mystery-ish storytelling of it all. And that is Jane by Maggie Nelson, in which Maggie Nelson documents what happened to her aunt who was murdered when she was a law student in the 1960s. On Evermore, she has a few songs. So Marjorie, for example, is about her grandmother, I believe. Fake fan. I was trying to think of like family history, murder, dark, you know, reflective vibes, and Jane is definitely that. So it's Evermore. Next up, we have Folklore. When she dropped this shit last summer, saved my quarantine, watered my crops, cleared my skin. It was everything. Folklore vibes, all about the storytelling. Taylor Swift was being less personally reflective and more just trying to show her songwriting skills, think about stories, great folklore. So the first one I have is a book that I don't like completely love, but I think it fits so well, so I'm gonna recommend it anyways, and I think it's worth your time. And this Autumn by Ali Smith. This book is very reflective about time, you know, set in autumn. Just gives me, you know, like the August Taylor Swift vibes. Very reflective. Ali Smith being her creative self on this in this book. I haven't read the rest of the seasonal quartet, but it definitely reminded me of folklore. So that's the first one. The next one we have The Dutch House. I recommended this one because of the last great American dynasty. Love that song about a house. And so the Dutch house about a house and siblings growing up in it. So beautiful story. Ann Patchett is a master. I love this book. I do prefer her book Commonwealth, but the Dutch house is very good as well. And then finally, last recommendation is Summer Water by Sarah Moss, queen of nature writing. I mean, come on. Salt air and the rest on your door. Holy shit, that was the worst <laughs> saying ever. I apologize, but you know, you know the vibes. Taylor Swift was really trying to evoke being in the wood, outside of the world, and kind of in your own bubble. Queen of trying to save quarantine, I love her so much, but Summer Water, we follow 12 different people that are vacationing in the, in the Scottish village. Tons of nature writing, and it all leads up to this boiling point of something that happens. It's pretty ominous. So collection of stories as well that all kind of merge into one. Love that. So those are my folklore recommendations. Next up, we have Lover. For some reason, I almost forgot to do a quick list for this, not me throwing shade at Lover. Not my favorite album of hers. It was fun when it came out though. I liked it. So for this one, I was gonna recommend Love Stories. 
as predicted. Not something I usually read, but I wanted to give some love stories that I liked. And the first one is Open Water by Caleb Zuma Nelson. First of all, shocked that it was snubbed for the long list for the booker. Very surprised by that. But basically this is a love story between two black artists living in London and the man in this relationship, he becomes very preoccupied with anxiety about his race and fearing for his life in this relationship and how that all plays out for him. Um, also a lot about music and art is talked about in this book, so I thought it was a perfect recommendation. It is sad though. Next one, also sad, but it's a love story and I really liked it, so I'm trying here. It is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. It also kind of plays into Miss Swift trying to be an ally with You Need to Calm Down. Um, this one follows a woman who suffers from a severe eating disorder and she tries to find herself through love with this woman that works at her Froyo shop who is a heavier woman and she tries to learn to love herself in the midst of this relationship and in her love interest Jewish family. And I thought it was so funny but also very sad and reflective and Melissa Broder is just a mad genius. I love her writing. I love her podcast. I love everything that she does. Um, I just really like that she has no filter and will say anything in her fiction. I, I really uh, respect that. She writes some very graphic sex in that book as well. False God vibes, you know? Okay, next up, this book is basically, you need to calm down in book format, like literally. It is Under the Rainbow by Celia Lasky. This one feels almost YA, but it's not. It has some adult themes going on, but it basically follows this organization that goes to this fictional town, I believe in like Kansas or something, that's supposed to be the most homophobic city in the United States, and they try to change the beliefs of people living there. And I mean, come on, you need to calm down. You're being too loud. Shade never made anybody less gay. I mean, come on. That book is that to a T. So if you like those themes, <laughs> you can read that one. It's, it's a cute little book that I enjoyed um, like two years ago. Reputation, my personal favorite Taylor Swift album. I must say I have taste, and so it is my favorite Taylor Swift album. It, this is the first TikTok that I did, the only one I've done so far, actually. And so I'll give you my recommendations if you haven't seen that. So the first one I have is My Year of Rest and Relaxation. This was the era in which Taylor Swift kind of pulled back from everything after the Kim and Kanye drama and found love with her current love interest. And so while in this book there is not love that is found, um, it is about a woman that decides to hibernate for a year basically. And that's kind of what Taylor Swift did, you know, similar vibes, also New York. Reputation is a very New York album in my mind. How to recommend that one. Next up, I have Writers and Lovers. In this book, we have a love triangle and a woman going through the toughest time in her life. She's just lost her mother and she's poor. Taylor Swift is not poor, but you get the vibes. Taylor Swift was going through it leading up to this album. And so I was thinking Getaway Car, Love Triangle, the vibes, right? Okay, and then last but not least, I have Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. Taylor Swift with the lead single, Look What You Made Me Do, was really trying to play into the villain narrative that people were assigning to her. And she, you know, she took back the snake symbolism and really played into it. And I feel like this book does that to a T in terms of following this woman who becomes very obsessed with taking pictures of average looking men in London. You see this woman gradually lose her mind and it becomes very dark very quickly. And so I think the spooky, sinister, dark, eat boys, kill boys vibes is very Taylor Swift in certain songs on this album. So those are three for Reputation, her best album. Fight me in the comments if you want to. Next up, 1989. For these recommendations, I wanted to recommend stuff that's like bombastic, heavy hitting, pretty big, explosive, big, like good book recommendations basically because 1989 is her most successful album to date. This is when she turned into pop and so I thought I'd give some big, loud books in my mind and also a little bit of autofiction. So the first up, in my Sally Rooney reading blog that I did recently, I basically said that the book in part reminded me of Blank Space by Taylor Swift, which is from this album in which Sally Rooney uses a character in the book named Alice, who is a novelist, and kind of addresses the criticism of Rooney's work through this character and through the book. And I really liked that she did that. Taylor Swift did the same thing or similar thing in Blank Space. So that's a really good recommendation for that coming out in like a month. So put that on your calendars. And then next up, this album was hard for me to provide recommendations for just because I don't really read a lot of loud, like big, bold, in terms of like bright books, I guess. 1989 feels very pop and bright. And I was like, what do I read that feels like that? But this next one is just like messy, relationship e but make it queer. It's Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. I love this book. Also set in New York and Welcome to New York by Taylor Swift. I actually really don't like that song um, that opens 1989, but I thought it would fit with like, you know, love triangles, 
relationships. You know, Taylor Swift is queen about writing relationships, and so I thought that was a good recommendation for this album. Last but not least, Fake Accounts. I try to think of another like auto fiction, self aware, big book, and for me, that is Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. Talk about it to death, I'm not gonna go into it anymore, but love a good auto fiction moment. I like when authors do that, so I had to recommend that one as well. Okay, three more albums to go. Next up, we have Speak Now. For this one, this is the first album that Taylor Swift wrote all by herself. Actually, the only album that she wrote all by herself. And so for this one, I wanted to give prose recommendations. Some of the best prose that I've read. And yeah, so the first book I have is Second Place by Rachel Cusk. This was a long listed for the booker, and I think it deserves it. A lot about art. We follow this woman who becomes obsessed with this man and invites him to live at their second house, basically, in the woods. Yeah, the prose in this and all of Rachel Cusk's books just bang, so had to give that recommendation from a pure writing perspective, like sentence level, holy shit, Rachel Cusk knows what she's doing, brilliant, amazing, show-stopping, never the same, never been done before, you get the meme. Okay, next up for prose, Katie Kitamura, A Separation. We have a book about a breakup. Come on, this album, Dear John, I mean, iconic. So I wanted to give, you know, breakup recommendation, but also this has some of the best writing on marriage, divorce, grief that I have ever read. And so this book I think about all the time and I loved it so much. So another prose recommendation. Finally, King of Prose himself, Ocean Vuong, Unearthed with Briefly Gorgeous, his debut novel that I adore. I really want to reread it. I read it like, I think two years ago now. And there's a new book coming out in April, a book of poetry called Time as a Mother that I'm very excited about. And so if you want beautiful insanely rich prose that's very poetic and just gorgeous. On Earth will be really gorgeous, gotta read it. Okay, next up, Fearless. For this one, this is kind of like when Taylor Swift really started popping off. She won the Grammy for Best Album of the Year, and so I wanted to do like coming of age books. People finding their footing in life and yeah, establishing themselves. So for this one, probably like my favorite coming of age book that I've read is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. We follow Theo. At the start of the novel in New York City, he loses his mother in a terrorist attack and a bombing in a museum. And after the bombing, he takes a painting and it stays with him for the rest of his life. And you see all of the relationships that he finds afterwards and what this painting does to his life later. And I just think that book is so, so good. I love Donna Tartt. I really want to read The Little Friend and I want to reread The Secret History because I haven't read her in a while and I really want to get back into her. So hopefully she has a new book coming out soon too. It's coming up on like 10 years since that book came out. So hopefully the wait pays off. Okay, next up I have The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante. I realized when making this list, I don't read too many coming of age books, but this one, we follow a woman as she grows from childhood into adulthood and you see her learn the truths about her parents and about her family, about the deceptions that occur in those relationships and how it impacts her as she becomes a teenager. And I will say this book hasn't stayed with me completely, but I really loved Elena Ferrante's writing overall, and I think it's a good recommendation if you love Fearless. <laughs> I think it has a kind of similar vibe in terms of it being, you know, very teenagey. It's a little bit more, like, dark than Fearless is, but similar, similar vibes. Next up, final recommendation for this album is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. Another one I read back in the day like a year and a half ago. This book, we open on a character named Melody at her sweet 16 birthday party or coming of age party that her family has. And so, when you're 15, not 16, but, but you know, similar vibes. Um, but you see the impacts that teenage pregnancy has on this family, notably Melody's mother and the impacts that that has on her in the family overall and them dealing with it and how it impacts the entire family um, over time. So this is a multi-generational story that I thought was so beautiful and it's less than 200 pages and it's just so incredible how she's able to pack so much into this book and it's very emotional and moving and I just loved it so much. Finally, her debut album, Taylor Swift. I had to give three debut novel recommendations that I love. So first up, Real Life by Brandon Taylor. You know me, favorite book last year so good. It started my standing of Brandon Taylor and it has stayed ever since. I'm sure if you follow my channel at all, you know what that book is about, but briefly it is about a black graduate student who is queer and trying to find himself dealing with his childhood trauma amidst the microaggressions of his peers. It's just so, oh, the prose is so good. I could have been a prose recommendation too, but I had to save it for the debuts. Next up we have Luster by Raven Leilani, another book that I adore. I've talked about incessantly on my channel, but such a strong first outing for Raven Leilani. I cannot wait to see what she does next. But this book was one, this could also fit prose. I was just so, so blown away the entire time I was reading this book. So many paragraphs, I was just like, calm down with the writing like it's just so it was so good um basically following a black woman in her early 20s or mid 20s 
and she gets in the middle of this open marriage relationship that gets very messy and you see her navigating that trying to find identity through her artwork and struggling to do all of those things love that book to death and then finally a book that i read this year that i adored this is like quite depressing for the young debut album of taylor swift but it's a debut so i'm only comparing those two things but acts of desperation by megan nolan this is a book that i read over one weekend i could not read anything else while i was uh, reading this book but we follow a woman that becomes very self-destructive and battling with depression and depending on a man that she meets who ends up rejecting her after a while in the relationship and you see the fall that ensues for her and her desperation and longing for this man and how it affects her it was just such a devastating moving and realistic depiction of all these issues that i still think about all the time and i want to read more from megan nolan when she writes her next book i think she is such a promising novelist so Love that. That was rapid fire. I feel like I've been talking very fast, but those are my recommendations based on Taylor Swift's albums. Yeah, I'm coming out as a Swifty on my booktube channel. The book hotties know that I stand Taylor Swift, but I was like, you know what? Let me bring my Swifty thoughts to booktube. Best album, reputation, second best album. <gasps> I didn't do Fred. Did I? I'm canceled. I'm canceled. I'm li literally, my stand card is revoked. Are you? <gasps> okay, hold on. Let me find some recs. See, it's in, it's in my favorites. I just said. How many of y'all were going through this and like, is he going to do red? Is he going to do red? So I'm so sorry. All right. That is ca beautiful chaos. So what is beautiful chaos? Okay, for red, I will give messy love books. I hope I have enough for this. Do I? Maybe I don't. Okay, I feel like I'm about to do red kind of dirty because I'm running out of books that fit with like red vibes. I'm so sorry, everyone. I really should have thought about this one before I filmed this video, but all right, I can do it. I got this. So I recently read the new Jonathan Frandon novel, Crossroads, and I will say Red is an epic masterpiece. 16 songs that are all incredible. Red's one of my favorite albums by her, and I think this book really embodies the chaos of Red, all of the feelings of desire and longing and heartbreak and betrayal that she tries to portray through red i think this book does that very well so that's a good recommendation there we go next up i will say another book that is very messy love wise is cleanness by garth greenwell also very beautifully written this follows an american teacher in sofia bulgaria as he battles with heartbreak and identity and a lot of tension between other people and that book gets very, very bleak at times in terms of its uh, sexual violence. Beware going into that, um, particularly one of the stories there, but, or chapters, they're kind of all like stories commingled, but I think that really portrays the kind of like break your heart open sense that I got from Red. So cleanness for that one. And then finally, okay, I'm changing one of my answers for Red. This just came to me, Blue It by Maggie Nelson, a book dedicated to a color, an album dedicated to a color. Lots about love and grief and longing and reflections and amazingness. There we go. Blue It's by Maggie Nelson for Red. Absolutely. All right, I cannot believe I forgot Red, but we did it. We did it, folks. I got all the albums in, all the book recommendations. A lot of these books could fit in other albums, but you know, I think that's a good placement for all of them. Let me know what you would recommend based on her albums in the comments below. I'm curious to know what you think, but yeah, so that was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're a Swifty, comment below. <laughs> Anyways, until next time, cheers.